Okay. Hi, students of the Jubilee School. I'm Philip Hose, and I'm sorry that I can't be with you, but I want to tell you, I, I want to talk with you and tell you how much I appreciate and respect what you're doing on Human Rights Day and how honored I feel to be honored by you. Um, it's great work to be doing research on, on civil rights figures and I'm sure you're finding all sorts of people who, who took brave stands and made, and made great contributions to, to justice. And uh, I feel lucky that I ever met Claudette and I, uh, the fact that we met is very much the product of the same sorts of things that you're going through, the same sorts of research that you're doing. Uh, as you probably know, I wrote a book about young people in U.S. history called We Were There Too. And um, when I reached the civil rights movement, I kept hearing a story about a 15-year-old girl who had done pretty much what Rosa Parks did only a year earlier on the same bus system and in the same city. And I thought how great it would be if she were still alive and could remember what it felt like to go through that back then in 1955. And it took me a long time to find her, to find Claudette Colvin. I didn't know whether she was alive or not. And after a while, I found out that she was. And then I found out that she lived in New York City and had an unlisted phone number. So how was I going to find her? And I finally tracked her down through a newspaper reporter named Richard Willing for USA Today. And he agreed, he was still in touch with her, and he agreed to get a message from me to her saying that I would like to write a book with her and she wrote back, she sent a message back through Richard saying maybe when I retire and so I asked maybe about six months later I asked Richard to do it again and he sent the same message and Claudette sent the same message bouncing right back to me maybe when I retire. So this went on for four years maybe twice a year and I asked Richard Willing to contact Claudette and she'd say, maybe when I retire. And then one night in 2006, in the fall, I came home and the light was blinking on my telephone. And uh, it was Richard Willing who said, uh, Claudette says, she, he left a message and it said, Claudette says she'll talk with you. Here's her phone number, good luck. And that was the start of it. I called her the next day and then we agreed to meet in New York and then we agreed to work together on a book about it about her early years. But uh, I found this very satisfying and I, I think you probably will too. I mean in fact the only real reason that, that we know anything about Claudette Colvin at all, you know she lived in, in Montgomery, Alabama up until 1958 when she left for New York City and she never told anyone about what she had done in those Montgomery years when she was a girl and the story would have died completely were it not for a newspaper reporter who did some great research, just, just as I'm sure you're doing. Um, his name was Frank Sikora, still is, he's still alive. And he was a newspaper reporter for uh, an, uh, a newspaper in Birmingham, Alabama, and he was assigned by his editor to write a story about the 20th anniversary of the Montgomery bus boycott. And he was digging through some old files and he saw Claudette's name and a light kind of went off and he said, wait a minute, there was somebody else besides Rosa Parks, wasn't there? And he kept digging and he found Claudette's old arrest record and then he found an address, 622 Dixie Avenue, Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, and he looked in the Montgomery phone book and he saw that there was still a Colvin listed at that address. So he got in his car and he drove all the way to Montgomery and he went to that address and knocked on the door and the woman who raised Claudette answered and gave Frank Sikora a telephone number and a snapshot, uh, a school snapshot of Claudette and Frank called Claudette and had the first interview with her ever and that was the tiny little opening of the door which kept opening a little bit there'd be another article or two every year and finally it was open wide enough for me to put my shoulder through and uh, kind of bust through and, and write a book about Claudette with, with her help and cooperation. 
So I find this work thrilling. I find research thrilling. I find the civil rights movement thrilling and full of bravery and risk and, and just great, great stories. So again, I can't thank you at Jubilee School enough for uh, thinking of me. I'm very, very honored, and uh, I wish you all the best of luck in your research. Thank you.